Coming up on this weekend's broadcast, a reflection back on what was a very dry summer for some and a cleanup of the harvest. Hello, everyone. We welcome you here to the broadcast this weekend. Mr. Pearson alongside me. I don't know about next week, though. You may be traveling in some wintry weather from what I hear. I may be. We're going to be talking to Greg in just a little bit. I'll be up in Montana next week, and it sounds like weather could get hairy up that direction. He'll go into detail on that forecast to be sure. We've been talking with folks about how this season turned out for them. We were in northeast Missouri just a few days ago. Jason Pollard sat down with us. He's with BASF. I asked him about that region there. Oh, to the west of Hannah and Quincy as you go on into northeast Missouri around the community of Shelbina and he shared with us. It was overall it was a really good growing season. Uh, the months of we got in the crop in at decent time. April, May was was planted uh, pretty normal for us. Uh, we got into to June and July. We had a good amount of rain. Uh, we get on to the first week of August. We start getting dry. August was pretty dry. September we really got pretty dry. So the later half of the year, we, we did get pretty dry. Uh, some people have just picked up some rain here recently, uh, but, but it was spotty, right? I mean, there, there was cert, certain spots along uh, this corridor, along 36, that did pick up some rain at some different times in the summer. Uh, but overall, the crop has been, been excellent, I think better than what guys expected. Uh, corn has been really good. Uh, soybean yields have been pretty good for the most part. Uh, there was a couple wind events that happened in my northern part of the county. It was pretty isolated. Uh, had some, some straight line winds that come in, but overall, uh, 22 was, was a great season for most guys, and I think yields were, were good, and, and commodity prices are, are, are pretty decent. So uh, I think overall, it was, it was one of the growing seasons that, that was, it was fun. I mean, things worked out well and, and enjoyed a lot of it, so yeah. A little more dryness than maybe you would have liked to have seen in August. Do you think you took the top off the yield at all? I believe, on, on we beans. Took, I believe we took the top end out of the beans. I think those guys, I, I am seeing a significant difference in those guys that did spray fungicide. It, it allowed those beans to hang on a little longer than what maybe some of those that weren't treated did. And so I, I but I do think we, we lost some top end yield potential, no doubt. We try to get that August rain to try and finish those beans. Uh, I don't think they finished all the way to the top like they normally would and, and maybe seed size is a little smaller, losing some seed weight. Uh, but, but overall, I thought they hung on really well and, and have been fairly surprised at some of the soybean yields we've been seeing come out this fall. I mean, we sometimes hear about the importance of good plant health toward the end of the growing season in beans, and, and you saw that enhanced by fungicide usage. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it definitely paid again uh, for growers this year, and uh, yeah, it's been consistent when, when we do that application. If we, even if we get into those, those droughtier, stressier periods, uh, you just see that crop tend to want to be able to fight and hang on a little longer. And soybeans, uh, they kind of like to lay down and, and, and go down. You know, they kind of like to lay down if, if you don't watch them. And so anytime you can keep them uh, pumped up a little bit and, and give you just a few more weeks or so to, to fill those pods, and that's a good thing. And so uh, I think we saw that this year on those guys that treated those acres. Jason Pollard is located at Leonard, Missouri. Then we were along the East Coast this week in Maryland and Delaware, Willen Family Farms, where R.C. Willen shared a few comments with us about the season they'd had. It was too dry at times, too hot at times, and yet some of the best yields ever, if not the best. Well, it started out with a lot of optimism. Certainly the prices were where they were. Uh, you know, we were looking at $16 beans and, and $8, $8 corn. Um, so it was an exciting start to the year, had a lot of promise, but certainly when we began to, actually we had to begin in the fall of 2021 to just begin to line up some of our inputs, especially the biologicals, um, the micronutrients. Uh, we even reached out as far as California to try, try to locate nutrient, micronutrients that we we're gonna need in our operation. So the challenge there was the financial side, being able to balance what our inputs were gonna be, and costs were gonna be, and what our expected um, sales prices were gonna be. As it worked out, um, it was extremely variable year. We had good, generally good planting conditions, the, probably the best we've had in three or four years here on our farm. Um, and we got the crop in in, in, a, in good timing for the most part. The challenge then after that was we, got, we did get quite a bit of rainfall early on in the season. Um, and we irrigate like 95% of our production, uh, which is helpful. But we had extreme temperatures that really challenged us. The nighttime temperatures were very high. Unlike the Midwest where you tend to cool down, we don't cool down much at nighttime. We also have high, very high humidity levels here, uh, one of the most difficult areas of the country, maybe of the world to grow corn, just from a disease standpoint. But uh, we have good products to use and through Total Acre, we've been able to evaluate not just our farm, 
but 750 operations around the country and how successful they've been with some of those input costs and deciding on which ones to use. Uh, we hit a period in uh, late July, early August, where it did not rain for four to five weeks at all. Temperatures were extreme, and we did lose yield because of temperature, we think. No, and even though we were able to provide enough water uh, for the crop, uh, just temperatures were difficult to manage in that time frame. And then it started to rain when we got ready to harvest. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's prolonged the harvest a little bit, but uh, it's been a very good season overall. We probably had our largest production numbers this year ever. Um, and that's attributed to just maybe being able to cross all the T's and dot all the I's at the right time. We enjoyed visiting with R.C. Willen and the other boys in the Willen family as we stopped there this week along the Delaware-Maryland state line. Oh, by the way, if you ever get a flat tire on their farm, you are in good hands, as we learned this past week.